Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to briefly break down how Frank Lampard's tactics helped Chelsea defeat Ajax in the Champions League. But before we do that, don't forget to give our video a thumbs up if you do enjoy it. The bell below does give you daily notifications regarding our organic, unfiltered soccer slash footy analysis. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. But now, let's get to the starting lineups. We look at Ajax more before 2 3 1 Tadic ahead of Proms, Van der Beek, and Ziyech, and in midfield, Alvarez and Martinez. Then we move to Chelsea fourth. 3-3. Three, three. We have hudson Adoy, Abraham, and Willian up front, and in midfield, Mason, Mount, Jorginho, and Kovacic. So now, let's get to the first half, see how both sides look to approach the game, and why Chelsea had the upper hand. So when we break down Chelsea against Ajax, the key themes that we do have to assess here is Chelsea's approach because they were the better size for large spells of this game. How? When we look at the board, we have Chelsea, like I said, in a 4-3-3. Without the ball, it should be a 4-5-1. They were good on the ball and got into key areas, but just lacked the final touch in those areas. And without the ball, they ensured that Ajax couldn't get in behind their defense. When you really do look at it, it's pretty simple. You have Abraham against the two center backs you have hudson Adoy, and you have willian who should be stepping up to the full backs and in midfield the battle is set mount against alvarez you have kovacic against martinez and technically it should be Jorginho against van der Beek. it didn't necessarily go that way because of the movement of the ajax attackers but also chelsea were flexible with their pressing and that did play a key role here because when they do drop off in that four five one for instance if you do have abraham stepping out to blend you could technically have mason out, pushing out into that space to step to Veltman and then have Jorginho push out to Alvarez and that didn't really bother them and it wouldn't bother them based off the fact that Van der Beek did often push out into a uh, central road cl role closer to Tadic and Jorginho often pushed Van der Beek off to the center backs and that often ensured that Chelsea could move across the pitch and have an extra man in midfield. Mason Mount was often igniting the press and stepping forward but that was obviously one way that they could go about it if they wanted to drop off and press in that manner there were times where we did see abraham step out to veltman and we would see Bl blind being pressed by willian and that was a gamble that chelsea wanted to make as well they didn't want daily blind on the ball dictating the tempo of the game from deeper positions being used as a creative outlet to play key passes across the pitch so they had willian step to him and that does leave talio fico free which is a bit of a gamble but what we often saw there was that Aspilicueta would sometimes gamble if he knew he could get out there quickly and close Talio Fico down on his first touch. Or if that wasn't the case based off the fact that he had to deal with proms, we would see Kovacic quickly shift out into that position. And that didn't harm Chelsea because like I said, Van der Beek pushed high. And what we would often see there is Mason Mount shift across the pitch to ensure that Martinez would mark that of the game. So that was pivotal. That was another way that Chelsea could go about it. And another way that they did also look at it was that sometimes we did have Alvarez dropping off deeper in between the center backs. So Alvarez would drop deeper and technically that made it easy for Chelsea because it would just be 3v3. You, the Ajax would push the full backs forward. Sometimes we'd have Dest taking up a narrow position and that never really affected Chelsea in that regard. So you'd have Hudson-Odoi with Veltman unless Alvarez shifted out to the right. And for the most part, you would have Willian stepping out to blend. And all Chelsea really had to do here was this is that the ball goes out to Dest in that narrow position, Mason Mount is right there. If the ball goes out to Talia Fico, you could push out Kovacic and then have Jorginho step because of the manner that Ajax's front players were going about it. Ziyech was often taking out positions out to the wider areas on the touchline and he couldn't beat Marcus Alonso 1v1. And if Dest did keep that wider role on the touchline, like I said, Ziyech would often drop off into deeper positions ahead of Marcos Alonso and try to play diagonal no balls out to proms to get him into 1v1 situations with Aspilicueta, but that never really harmed Chelsea. And on the flip side, proms, if he wasn't dropping off narrow, what we would see here is that he would often try to adopt positions a goal side of Aspilicueta, but again, never really harmed the Chelsea backline either. And what was really strange about the way Ajax went about the game was that they ensured that Chelsea were able to press across the pitch based off the fact that Van der Beek was adopting a higher role. 
and that didn't really help them because Chelsea pressed well when they dropped off they were able to man mark across the pitch and they closed down areas tightly so they never really got the ball into Tadic or Van der Beek and it was a bit odd that we never saw Van der Beek drop off deeper into positions where he can pick up the ball in midfield to help Ajax push forward and the same thing for Tadic not really involved looking to make runs in behind and on two occasions we did see balls played over the top trying to get Tadic and Proms into those positions in behind the Chelsea back line but Kurt Zuma did well to really close it down and that was key to what Chelsea were doing if they want to press high like I said they were able to do that and close down markers tightly and the only time that like I said if they dropped off if Ajax dropped off into that back three the only time where they were harmed was was if you had Abraham Gamble and step to the Onana and that would leave them 4v3 and that was a situation for Ajax to get out. But on that note, you see Chelsea's press, you see how effective it was. So when we look at Ajax and see how they went about their business, it was something similar because they also had that midfield battle set, but their pressing wasn't that successful. It didn't really ensure that Chelsea couldn't break into their half and create chances. When we look at it, you have Tadic and if he steps out to Zuma, we often saw Ziyech step out to Tomori, which means that Proms would step to Aspilicueta, and what would happen there is that you have Van der Beek against Jorginho, and then you have the midfield battle set in stone with Alvarez on Mount and Martina stepping to Kovacic. What would happen there is that they would gamble with Ziyech stepping to Tomori and hope that Kepa would try to play the ball over the top. On the flip side, what we'd also see is that if Tadic did step to Kepa, we'd have Proms stepping out to Zuma, and we'd have again like I said Ziyech stepping to um, Tomori and that would ensure that Talia Fico and Dest would step out to the fullbacks if the ball was played into those zones they would gamble press high and try to squeeze Chelsea into their half that really did happen and what we often saw was especially from goal kicks you would have Tadic stepping to Zuma you would then have Tomori with Ziyech and like I said proms out in the wider area and the midfield battle set on one occasion, we did see the ball played back to Kepa, and he tried to clip it over Ziyech, and it ended up falling into his path, but Tomori did well to clean up that danger. And on the flip side, we did see them try to execute that again, but uh, we did have Kepa clip the ball over Ziyech. It fell to Alonso, and then that ignited Dest to press, but Chelsea were able to get out of the back. Ajax didn't force Kepa into any legitimate goal-scoring saves in that first half, and the first half was largely dependent on Chelsea breaking down the left-hand side, getting Hudson-Odoi into some key areas, but Hudson-Odoi lacking that extra bit of quality to make the right decision and force Onana into some key saves. When we look to the first example, it's Tomori stepping into Ajax's half, getting beyond Tadic, and what he locates is that Hudson-Odoi does have Dest in a narrow position. Tomori clips the ball over Alvarez because he locates Mount making the run off him, and when Mount picks up the ball in that left channel, he goes 1v1 with Alvarez and locates hudson Adoy shifting back into that area. What we end up seeing there is that Mount plays a quick 1-2 with hudson Adoy and breaks beyond Alvarez into the left half space because we don't end up seeing Des track that run. And when Mount breaks free on goal, he should score, but he forces Onana into the save. When we look to the next example, is Jorginho winning a challenge with Dest at the halfway line and he ends up splitting Martinez and Van der Beek to find William in a narrow position ahead of Talia Fico. William instantly switches the ball out to the left-hand side for hudson Adoy, who's behind Dest. He's able to run at Veltman, who is shifting over to protect that space, and he cuts wide because Veltman shows him that way, but he fires his shot wide of the net. Shortly after that, we have Jorginho in a deeper position, finally getting away from Tadic and Van der Beek, who took turns pressing him to clip a ball into the left channel, and that falls to Mount, who was able to run off Alvarez again into space between Dest and Veltman. When he does pick up the ball, he ends up pulling it back for Marcus Alonso, and his cross into the box is cleared by Martinez, but it falls into the path of hudson Adoy, free on goal, again, not hitting his target, firing a shot wide of the net. hudson Adoy is being placed into these good positions. Mason Mount is constantly making runs in behind Alvarez, but Chelsea aren't testing Onana 
or getting any quality shots on goal. So when we look to the final two examples, we highlight Chelsea's pressing when Alvarez drops a bit deeper. The first example sees Alvarez drop off into that right channel. So hudson Adoy steps to him. You also have Abraham stepping to Veltman who does shift over and you have Willian near Blind. When Blind ends up shifting the ball out to Taliafico who is now free because Willian was sucked into that space. Like I said, Kovacic steps out into that area to press Talia Fico and that means Mount does shift over to take Kovacic's man and he picks up Martinez and that was the key factor to Chelsea's pressing or one of the key factors. Now we have Talia Fico play the ball into the path of Martinez and Mount steps in and gets the ball out to Willian who instantly locates Hudson Adoy ahead of Alvarez who was looking to push forward back into his midfield position. Willian slides the ball out to Hudson Adoy who allows allows Alvarez to recover and when he does look to cut in and play a pass Alvarez makes a last ditch tackle to ensure that Hudson Adoy doesn't make the difference there. When we look to the final example Alvarez is a bit higher but what we end up seeing here is Abraham pressing Onana and with the center back split out you have Hudson Adoy and Willian in that space. Onana's deliveries from the back were poor throughout that first half so here he ends up clipping the ball into the path of Jorginho who is free and he nods the ball over Alvarez for Mount who ends up sliding the ball across desk for Hudson Adoy. That does leave Hudson Adoy again in a 1v1 battle with Veltman and we have to give Veltman credit here because he often showed Hudson Adoy to the outside this time Hudson Adoy cuts to the left and he fires his cross into Onana. When we do break down that first half and we see the multiple chances that Chelsea create, a lot of them stem from the same patterns. It's Hudson Adoy getting that ball across desk, Hudson Adoy running at Veltman, but not being able to make the difference in the final third. Mason Mount running beyond Alvarez, Mason Mount igniting presses, and the Chelsea press working to a T. So when we look at that and we do assess it, Chelsea were the better side in the first half, just unable to test Onana. So when we look to the second half, there weren't really any significant changes in the opening 15 to 20 minutes. We did see Ajax though get two golden opportunities where they did hit the post, and there was one play in particular where we did see Chelsea's pressing nearly get the better of them, where we had William step to blend and then we had Aspilicueta quickly shift out to death but blend was able to split the Chelsea right side and play the ball into proms who let the ball go across his body and spun off Zuma with Zuma recovering well down that left channel but when proms delivered the cross into the box Tomori was able to clear his lines besides that the game really took a shift in the final 20 minutes and that stemmed from Lampard's substitutions he brought on Pulisic for Willian and we saw Mishi Bashuai come on for Abraham. And that's when we saw Chelsea begin to dominate the left side of the pitch again for the final 20 minutes. That's where they were able to score their winner and that's where they created their best chances. So when we look to the first example, it's Marcus Alonso brushing off Ziyech off the ball and back healing it into the path of Pulisic. Now we have Pulisic running at Alvarez and he's able to cut in on him and locate the run of Mishi Bashuai across blend. So what we end up seeing Pulisic do is that he pokes it across Veltman for Bashuai, making that dart into the box, but Blind does track well, and Mishi Bashuai can only poke a tame effort at Onana. Shortly after that is Chelsea building out of the back with Tomori locating Mason Mount, shifting out to the right of Alvarez. He plays that ball into Mount, who quickly facilitates it out into the path of Pulisic, and what we see now is Pulisic running at Dest, cutting in on him, and Alvarez, two fire shot on goal that is blocked into the path of Misi Bashuai, who was in between both center backs. He's able to get that ball point blank range from eight yards out, but he skies his effort over the net. And as we're seeing in those two chances, it's Pulisic doing a better job at running at the defense, offering more of a threat in that final third than Hudson Adoy did. And with Hudson Adoy on the right hand side shifting into central zones, it allows Pulisic to get to be isolated in those areas 
and make the difference. When we look to the next example, it's Alonzo breaking forward and not being pressed until he gets into Ajax's half by Dest. And Alonzo is able to cut in on him and locate Hudson Adoy ahead of Veltman in between the center backs. When he receives that ball ahead of Veltman, he ends up back healing the ball in between Alvarez and Veltman for Pulisic breaking into left half space. And when he delivers that cross into the box for Hudson Adoy, unfortunately, Hudson Adoy's shot is blocked by Alvarez again, who makes a second consecutive key block to ensure that Chelsea are unable to test Onana and that was pivotal there. So when we look at the final example prior to the goal it's Alonso bringing down the ball and he ends up wrapping it around Ziyech for Jorginho who ends up squaring it to Mount ahead of Dest. What we end up seeing there is that Mount slides the ball out to Pulisic who pulls out Veltman and now we have Pulisic cut across Veltman and across Alvarez to poke the ball into Michi ahead of Blind. Pulisic continues his run in beyond Martinez and he plays the layoff into the path of Pulisic who fires a shot inches wide of the net. But like you see there, again down the left hand side, again a combination in between Michi and Pulisic and just like that we see different stages of their build up play in these four examples before we get to the winner. So we break down the winner again down the left hand side. What we end up seeing here is that we have Tomori sliding the ball beyond Ziyech again into Marcus Alonso. When Marcus Alonso breaks forward, he squares the ball into the path of Mount, who's able to shift his body to a way that he could gain space and slide the ball out into the path of Pulisic. So when he slides the ball out to Pulisic, what should be noted here is that we do have Alonso continuing his run into that space and driving forward to pull out Dest so Pulisic can get that pass. What we end up seeing there now is that Pulisic ends up taking on Dest 1v1 and cutting to the byline and he can't cut back because Alvarez does come over to ensure that he can't pull back into that space. What ends up happening here is that Alonso ends up pulling his run into the path of Veltman you have Nishi near Blind, and you also have Hudson Adoy occupying Talia Fico. When Pulisic gets a yard on Dest, he pulls the ball across the six yard box. Veltman can't get to it because Alonso is occupying him, and it falls into the path of Nishi, who fires a powerful effort off the crossbar down. Just like that, after several attempts down that left hand side, we get the combination of Alonso, Pulisic, and Nishi Bashuai to claim all three points in a Chelsea performance that deserved it. When you break down the game as a whole, Chelsea's pressing and the way that they did align themselves without the ball ensured that Ajax couldn't create any clear-cut scoring opportunities. And we look at Chelsea constantly dominating down the left-hand side. The difference here was that hudson Adoy was wasteful in the first half and when Mishi and when you had Pulisic come on in the second half, they offered that bit of quality that those two in the first half in Abraham and in hudson Adoy lacked. So let me know what you guys think. Can Chelsea go on to win this group now? And what about Ajax? Losing some key players this summer, do you think they'll be able to mount another challenge in the Champions League? Meet me in the comments below. Don't forget I upload videos every day and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And that was your Daily Dose of the Interviews.